Okay, today we're going to do a stomp test, otherwise known as fixed weight calibration test for the power meter. There's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, whether the power meter X is better than power meter Y. But if you think about it, we need to establish a gold standard. Essentially, the only way to do that is to hang a fixed weight from your power meter and work out whether the deflection displayed in torque is actually accurate for your power meter. It's a relatively simple process and I'm going to talk you through this step by step now. Okay, here we go with the setup on the stomp test. As you see, I've got uh, the TT bike on the turbo trainer. Um, I've got everything set up already prepared for the test. In fact, let's have a little look at the equipment required. The essential equipment is, of course, the weights. Too light a weight, and you're going to get a lot of variability when you um, try and interpret the results. Too heavy a weight, and it's going to be awkward to do the test, uh, particularly regarding the pressure on the pedals and the back wheel. So. If you keep a relatively low gear, then around about 10 kilos is about right, although 15 or 20 is also fine. So into step one, you want to secure the rear wheel. As you see, a lot of people just apply the brake, the rear brake very tight. Um, I've actually used a uh, kitchen roller here to make sure there's no movement at all. Step two, you're going to manually zero the computer to make sure that everything's at zero at baseline with no weight attached, of course. Before you do that, I just quickly went into the menu and altered the timeout display so that it wouldn't turn off during the test procedure. Step three is to make sure that you choose a suitable uh, gear. On this one, I think I'm on uh, 39 ring on the front and 17 or so on the back. A low gear gives you more torque on the hub, so it potentially is more accurate. It's important to make sure the cranks are horizontal. You could use a spirit level. Here I'm just using a ruler and measuring the, the height from the floor, which is clearly the simplest thing to do. To be honest, if you do it by eye, it's probably sufficient, but do spend a few seconds doing that. The next step uh, is actually to hang the weights. Two quick tips here. Make sure you hang the weight off the uh, pedal, not from the crank, because it could be um, altering the force vector if you hang it from the crank. Also, when you hang the weights, of course, make sure the weight's not touching the floor. It's surprisingly difficult to do that with a large weight. You actually may end up uh, jacking the front wheel of the bike up, but a small five kilogram weight should be okay. So then on the head unit, you want to read off the torque measurement. Uh, like I said, the power tap actually displays the exact torque. So just make a note of that along with your gear, as in which gear you're in, i.e. 39 times 17. And then you want to repeat the whole thing on the other side left then right, um, go through the same procedure of making the cranks horizontal. And here I'm actually going to repeat the procedure again left and right for different gears. The more you repeat a test, the more reliable your results going to be. If you just do the test once in one gear at one temperature, it is possible you're going to get subtle inaccuracies in the chain that um, you weren't predicting. So once we've gathered our data and made a note of it, uh, the exciting part, I guess, is putting it into the calculator. And fortunately, this is all made simple on Cycling Power Lab. Um, go into Cycling Power Lab. I'm going here to Power Tap Calibration, but you can see they've got pages for SRM and Quark. Enter the exact weight. Come to that in a second. Crank arm, sprocket, teeth, and your measured torque. And then it will tell you by calculation how accurate the precise measures were on the day. Um, it takes an average of left and right. And on my test today, I was actually around 0.04% within the predicted value. However, this was subject to a caveat, which is I kind of assumed that my weights were exactly 10 kilos, but uh, they weren't. Uh, it was almost 5% out. And uh, when I put them on an accurate weighing scale, as you see here, they're actually 10.3 kilos. So I actually advise you to weigh your weights uh, potentially on two different scales in order to establish your weights are exactly what they should be, including the hanging straps that might make a small but significant difference. Okay, so that's the STOM test, the fixed weight calibration test. And as you see, it's a very simple process, particularly when done with power tap hub and power tap jewel because they display the raw figures. But there's no reason you can't do that on other power meters as well. I was really surprised at the results, mainly how accurate the power tap hub was. Um, when I first did this test uh, just yesterday, 
the power tap accuracy was within 0.3% of the purported value. That is uh, pretty amazing. The test does depend on having precision through the whole chain. In other words, uh, knowing the weight of your hanging weights, uh, hanging them accurately on the pedal, having the cranks perfectly level, making sure there's no movement on the rear wheel. If you just take those uh, little precise steps, you'll make the process more accurate. And I also suggest um, repeatability. There's no reason you can't do it uh, multiple times for different gears or in different conditions if you think uh, you want to test it at a different temperature, for example. You can easily do that. So there you go. Easy step-by-step -step method of how to do the stomp test. It's worth doing. It establishes a gold standard. Very quick. Give it a go, guys. Take care.